family. Good morning. It is Super Bowl Sunday. I don't watch sports. No. But it's still Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> so it's not it's not a, a hugely different day for myself, but um, I wanted to use it as a theme for today's sermon. So today, the title of today's sermon is Attitude of an Athlete. Now it's funny because even though I don't watch sports, <coughs> I played sports all growing up. I played basketball all through my younger years, and then in high school, I played football. And so I can, I can. There's a lot of parallels to being an athlete and being a disciple. And as as of recently, after I had a back injury end of last year, I got back into the gym, and my body is becoming acquainted again with what it takes to to work out and to get through that pain. And I was sitting there. I was at the gym yesterday. I was up at four to go to work. Had an 11 hour day. Had to go to Costco to pick up our car, and then I went to the gym. And I just kept telling myself. Man, I, I don't want to go. I'm tired. But I went, and even through my workout, I was like, man, there's so many spiritual concepts and principles in the midst of this workout and being a disciple. Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews 12. Come on, honey. And so I am excited about just to see not only the physical growth of going to the gym, but the spiritual growth that I'm going to have because I'm, I'm every time Jasmine was actually surprised <laughs> I took off my headphones after a workout, and she heard gospel. She heard praise and worship, and she's like, "You listen to praise and worship when you work out?" I said, "Yeah," because I said, "When I'm working out, I feel like my spirit is open, and I'm not gonna pour in aggressive music in my spirit." I spend when I work out, I process my week. I go through whatever I'm going through, and so I like to have praise and worship going through my mind, so I can filter them in a spiritual way. Amen. And if I'm not, the music usually catches my attention, and I redirect my mind. <laughs> so in, in Hebrews 12, 1, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. So today in the Super Bowl, there's, there's going to be tons and thousands of people in the entire stadium watching the game. But furthermore, there's going to be individuals like ourselves watching it on TV, eating chicken wings. So not only do they they look up at the stadium and they see thousands of people cheering, there's going to be thousands more people watching on TV. I mean, I know it's the U.S. Super Bowl, but who know, I don't know if people internationally are going to be watching it too. I'm sure the whole world is going to be watching this one football game. Likewise, in our walks with God, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And these football players, what, they walk out the stadium, they look up, and they just hear, they see people with their bodies painted with numbers and letters, people with big foam fingers, and it inspires them. It's like, man, they're proud to wear that, that Patriots jersey. They're motivated to do well, not only for themselves, but for their teams and the fans of their teams. Yeah. So as a disciple, do you, is that how you walk into church on Sunday mornings? Like... Or do you walk in like, man, I made it. You're welcome. Ooh. Hello. I'm here. No, that's not how. That's not how these players. That they're playing for the Patriots or the Eagles, but we're on God's team, right? Yeah. I know. I come to church and I'm like, man, it's the entire heavenly realm is watching. Mm. This park service. So y I know y'all trying to downplay the park services. Don't downplay. This is not my park. This is God's park service. Yeah. And he's watching. Yeah. yeah. Man, we got to go to the park. It's going to be hot. They ain't got food today. <laughs> we got water. We got some spiritual food. Speaking of water. <laughs> right there, Michael. We're, okay, this throat is dry. <laughs> um, but is that how you walk into church on Sunday? <laughs> He's trying you know, to just, himself. just sad and destitute. <laughs> like, like we, like we owe you something. Mm. You didn't walk into my church. You walk into God's church. <laughs> but what, what <coughs> excites you? Everyone, you, you're so invested in these football games, right? That's yeah. why people they jump off the couch and they're yelling at the screen. Yeah. I even myself last last Super Bowl, I got really invested because it takes me a little, it takes me about thirty minutes to get invested. <laughs> if, if I'm talking to somebody, I will not care about this game. But if I start to watch all of the athletic back, like my background, it starts to like 
come back a little bit. And then I get invested. I see someone get hit. I'm like, ooh! <laughs> you know, it, 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 it starts to fire you up. You're like, ooh, that was a good hit. <laughs> and all that all that, that old athlete starts to come back, right? Yeah. And you see, you people see their husbands. or Some, some women are super into sports, too. Yeah. <laughs> I see some sisters, they go nuts. Yeah, oh, yeah. What are you <laughs> doing? Like, yo, like, you're a beast right now. <laughs> But are you that way when it comes to God? Yeah. And being a disciple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you are you that fired up when you see Satan take out one of your brothers? Oh. A lot of times you're just like, well. Mm, no. They, they're struggling, so let me just let them struggle alone. Mm-hmm. See, as disciples, we're on God's team. And we have teammates, which is yeah. other disciples. And so much more than on a Super Bowl, we have the, all the people in our regions that are watching, but we all we have the kingdom of God watching. We, we have social media. You best believe the kingdom of God is watching. Brothers in London, in Africa, in Australia. Every time I post a blog, I look at, like, it shows me on my uh, WordPress the countries that I've clicked on the link. Every time, it's like 13 countries, 14 countries. <laughs> and I'm blown away. That, and it reminds me every single time, the kingdom of God is all over the world. Philippines, Paris, all of these different flags pop up. The kingdom of God is watching us, right? And we owe it not only to ourselves, to the people in our region, but to the, to the kingdom of God to be fired up about being a disciple. Later on in verse 1, it says, let us throw off everything that hinders us. One of the, I think one of the most inspiring things in a football game is to see someone come up against that big D lineman and burst off of him and keep running. Because everyone on the football field, they have a specific role. And defensive players, they are big. They're like Matt size, my size. <laughs> I was a D tackle in high school. You wasn't getting past me, bro. <laughs> you, it wasn't happening. I'm big. <laughs> What's up? You wasn't getting though, and to see someone like Andres' size just boom and just run off, man, that that fires me up. I'm like, yo, he just got past that dude. My, as a disciple, to see somebody do that spiritually, that fires me up. Yeah. yeah. To see somebody overcome those like space jam sized demons. Y'all remember mm. Space Jam? Yeah. That, that, yeah. that big purple one was like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> right? <laughs> and to see a disciple like bust them with the shoulder and keep going, and then they what? They hit that touchdown. They hit the first year as a disciple. Hey. I, that, that first year when I woke up, I had to hit that Marvin Sad. Never would have made it. <laughs> Never would have made it without you. That's all. That was on repeat. I said, "God, this has been a year." <laughs> I, I done almost. I done went bald. People were like, "What happened to your hair?" I said, "The kingdom." <laughs> <laughs> the kingdom stole my edges too, y'all. <laughs> I had great hair when I got baptized, and then the suffering just <laughs> took it off. <laughs> but you, you, you start to see people grow, and it's inspiring to see. Man, they're overcoming. Yeah. Yeah, but they're all they're also working as a team. That running back didn't didn't break through that line unless the old lineman took that D lineman and moved him out the way. Yeah. So are you are you helping your your brothers? Are you discipling them and moving those demons out the way so they can get that fast break? Yeah. So they can get those yeah. touchdowns. Mom. Or do you see him like that's a that's a big demon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. That's Come up. Right. I need some. Listen, y'all can handle that. I'm, I'm thirsty. <laughs> I know that's how we get. It's like, yo, like you going through a lot, and I'm going through a lot. Yeah. And I just can't help. I I gotta worry about me. We we are playing in the spiritual Super Bowl, y'all. We made it on the team. We made it to the playoffs. It's like every single Bible study is like a game getting you to the playoffs. You're starting to see God. Okay. You're starting to get on the team. It's like seeking God. One and zero. Word of God. Two and zero. Discipleship. Three and zero. Every single game, and then what? You get baptized. You in the Super Bowl, baby. You here. But we gotta, we gotta win the Super Bowl mm. because Satan is trying to win too. Uh-huh. Yep. And he got a lot more people on his team. Yeah.
That is what discipleship is. We are in the spiritual Super Bowl every day. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have to take on this this attitude. You see, when when these football players, when they're not in season, they're in off season, but what are they doing? Training. They're training. They're training hard. Because they're like they're like, okay. The yeah. Patriots beat us last year, but they ain't going to beat us this year. Yeah. yeah. Every squat matters to them. Yeah. Every bicep curl has a purpose. Yeah. Everything means something to them because they're training because that's how much dignity and pride and nobility they take in their walks with God. Is that how you have quiet times? Yeah. Or you're just Come like, on, I'll read bro. Psalms 1 through 7 just because I need to have a quiet Come time. On, bro. Right. Come on. I don't walk in the gym just like, <coughs> I'm going to do some bicep curls and, uh, <laughs> yeah, the gym Me is big. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I might do those ropes and maybe like some stair masters. I'll never physically grow to where I want to be physically having workouts like that. Yeah. You'll never grow spiritually if you're having quiet times like that. Um, yeah. Just in a grab bag. Like you got like you went trick or treat and you're like, let me just see what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm having a Kit Kat. Oh, <laughs> that's not how you should be with your walk with God. Amen. Come on. All right, you guys. Point number one, you have fans in the stands. Come on, bro. Yeah. Going back to Hebrews 12, starting in verse 2, it says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So Jesus is the quarterback, right, on the field. The, the team cannot maneuver and grow and get these touchdowns without the quarterback. He, he's the one calling the plays, right? And it's our job to continue to move along. Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He's going to continue to work out our faith. Mm -hmm. It says, but we have to fix our eyes on Jesus. If a, if a wide receiver, he's looking at the quarterback. Come on, Michael, work that. Okay, work he's looking that. at the quarterback, work letting him know, where, where do I go? Analysis. Because the, the quarterback's gonna let him know either a yes or a no. Yeah. And the wide receiver is going to go. He already has to hit the play from the quarterback, and he has to hit that slant and be open and fixing his eyes on the quarterback because if yeah. not, he's going to what? There's going to be an interception. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be a fumble. Or he's going to catch the ball and buck, get cracked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, those ones fire me up, too. As soon as, the one that, as soon as that guy catches the ball and that D tackles, they're like, boom. Right. That's when, fire, that's when I get invested. I'm like, okay, yeah. we're playing it. <laughs> a lot of you guys don't know like on the football field there was no smiles for me in the in the in the locker room it was cool but then as soon as the game started i didn't yeah. i didn't really talk to my 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 teammates i just i just was it was me peterson and i was on that line <laughs> baby, and i was going and i was going for it is 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 that, how, is that your is that your mentality yeah that's what excites me about discipleship. It's like, man, we in this fight, and it's and it's a struggle. And right now, we can say this is our off season, but are you training? Are you in there? Are you fixing your eyes on Jesus, letting Him direct you, tell you where to go? Or are you out there running and running, and you look up and the ball hits you in the forehead, and you're just lost in the sauce? You see. Everyone has their certain position on the field, right? Not everyone's a running back, a quarterback, a D-tackle, an old lineman. We have to not only be part of the team, but we have to work together. Yeah. Like I said last week, when I was talking about those people that God brings to our life to help us learn about grace and be more gracious and patient, that's that that's their strength and your strength, right? I know I could I am married, I am a half of one. We mm. all, we have to work together. God knew that I, if I had someone that had all my strengths, they probably have all my weaknesses, and this would not be good. <laughs> and that's how, that's why we're called the the body of Christ, not the the one part of Christ. Yeah. If everyone was a quarterback, they just pass the the ball back to the two to them. No one's no one's scoring nothing. Yeah. They're just passing the ball, passing the ball. If everyone's a running back, everyone you can everyone's standing around, but one guy runs around. We all have different parts that we play, but are you actually playing your part? Are you being the old lineman that you're supposed to be so the running back can go and score the touchdown? Are you ushering during services? Are you song leading? Mm. Are you are you trying to shepherd? Are you doing what you need to do? 
Or are you just there, drinking the water in the free Gatorade? You and your salvation. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing the jersey ain't playing. Mm, that's true. That's how a lot of us are. We like, listen, I'm saying. <laughs> You need people on the field. Yeah. You don't get that jersey for nothing. You made your way, you made your way to the playoffs, and now you in the Super Bowl, and now you want, and now you want to slack off. Mm. I, my Bible says it's more difficult. Baby. I had some bumps. Me too. And then the, the, the guy sitting with me kind of kind of came at me sideways a little bit. I had to like. <laughs> and I could. There's multiple times I could have been like, you know what, I'm good. But I went through my studies. And in May, it'll be five years as a disciple. <laughs> Come on. I didn't like him the first time. I mean, that's, that's, you know, Janice and Noel, they're like at 25. I'm like, five more times this? Year <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> but, man, I, I've come too far. And then I've come too far to not to not just be a great disciple. Yeah. I've given up so much. <laughs> if I was going to quit, I would I should have just quit a long time ago. Right. Yeah. I didn't go through all of this, now I'm going to quit. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I done put too much investment, too much time. I done lost too many nerves. <laughs> <laughs> to just quit and give up and not to be great at it. I'm, I'm, I'm here. We, we going to evangelize this one. I'm, if it's personally me. I'm like, come on, Jesus, we, we in this. That is, this is a lot of time and a lot of hair. Right. <laughs> a lot of edges. Okay. I'm, going on in verse 2. <laughs> For the joy set out before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I always thought of this scorn. I was like, what does scorn mean? You know, that famous quote, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I thought scorn, scorch, burn, like hell hath no fury like a woman that's been burned. Scorn is way deeper than that. It's synonymous with hate. Oh. It's... it's to deeply detest. It says that Jesus deeply detested the shame of the cross. Mm. When we depict Jesus and we have him on the cross, we always have him like in a little loincloth. Because who wants to imagine Jesus naked? Like, that's crazy. But but trust and believe, he did not have that loincloth when he went through that. Mm. So to imagine him being spit on, ripped up, beaten, and butt naked. In front of his mother. That's shameful. That's dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. I would have to pray more than three times. Right. Yeah. Man. You, you about to do what to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to leave you said, like, them angels would have, it would have been, it would have been, them angels would have been up in there. <laughs> we would still be killing goats today. <laughs> on this, on the sacrificial lamb. All that. You Man. Do what? I'd have been up there like, show us you, the, show us you, the, you, you the real deal. I was waiting for an invitation. <laughs> and I would have hopped off that thing. Y'all know I'm dramatic. <laughs> I'd have been like, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. To <laughs> let you know, you tried it. <laughs> but Jesus stayed up there. That's what these athletes do. They, they have a goal in mind. The joy set out before them. They want that ring. We already got that ring from God. Mm. And we answered. I want God well done, that good and faithful. Hey, I'm in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, that's all I'm trying to get to. If, I, if, I, if it's just a pinky toe, I'm trying to get there. Heaven, heaven the, the, the Patriots, the Eagles, they're going to get a ring. We get eternal life. Yeah. But as we've all seen in these Super Bowl games, it's grimy, it's bloody, people get injured, it's a fight. Mm -hmm. Every yard matters, every play matters, every player matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because of the joy set out before them, they're locked in right here. Mentally, there's no losing. This, it's a mental fortitude that they build up where? While they're training. Mm -hmm. They can't come into the Super Bowl being mentally weak and physically weak. Mm -hmm. Because they've been preparing for this for months and months and months and months. A lot of them years. 
We have to have the same mindset when it comes with our walk with God. Every day. We do not know if today's going to be the day where that, that linebacker comes off and knocks us off our feet. We have no idea. Say, Satan is going to pick the day. Go get Talisha. Will you be prepared for that? Yeah. Or will your spiritual body be untrained to handle the impact? Yeah. A lot of I've been spiritually injured. Praise God, I'm here today. That's literally the grace of God. Yeah. And I and I can say that a lot of it has been because I was spiritually trained to persevere through it. Now there were other other foundations I had built. Like I'm not gonna leave the kingdom of God no matter what. Yeah. That's like why I'm here. Yeah. But can I say that I was I was. I had a foundation of I'm gonna be righteous. I'm gonna consider all these things pure joy. I'm, that I, I can't say I had those foundations. And the, but now I'm I, I'm building on those other foundations because I have to grow in my walk with God. Or else, what I'm gonna get benched, right? Because people yeah. get benched. Yeah. If if you're not listening to the quarterback, come on, we switch you out. And if it continues. You get cut. Yeah. See, we think that people choose when they want to walk away from the church. Not right. Bible. That's God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's Let's true. Let's turn our Bibles to First Thessalonians real quick. Come on. This is awesome. Yeah. Using that as a good analogy. I appreciate it. I like that practical stuff. What's the my phone got no service yet. All right, Second Thessalonians, starting in verse two. Second Thessalonians in verse two. I mean, sorry, chapter two. Two Thessalonians two eleven. <laughs> okay. Second Thessalonians two eleven. Amen. Are we all there? Amen. Yeah. 2 Thessalonians 2.11 reads, For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion <coughs> so that they will believe the lie. Yeah. And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Mm. <coughs> People just don't fall away. Yeah. Mm. There comes a certain point in time where God will sit, God will intervene and allow them to believe the lie. You see, while while we're playing the game, sometimes we wish we were the, we were on the opposite team. They got more players. They got better Gatorade. <laughs> we start looking at the other team like, and they got better jerseys and nicer shoes. They got sponsored by Nike. We start looking at the world, wishing we were them. Yeah. I said, there's so many times where I didn't even, I didn't share my faith because I felt like I'm not going to invite you into this Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> we going down. Yeah. I was hurt and bitter. I said, I'm not about to invite. I was an AMS like, uh, yeah, I do go to church, but you, I think in my head, like, you probably don't want to come, though. Wow. I, I barely want to come. <laughs> Meanwhile, spiritually, I'm actually in the safety boat, and they're in the Titanic. Yeah. But I'm over here, Matt, the safety boat's crammed. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever the situation may be. Come on. But that's how it is. When, when players on your spiritual team when they start taking their eyes off the quarterback and start looking at other players, what happens? Bitterness, resentment. All the things start building up in the heart. And then what? And then they don't even want to play anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But did you help them? Did you get them, hey, we need to be focused right now. Right. Did you help your teammate get focused back on the game and on the quarterback? Or did you allow them to just get benched? We are the family of God. We are the team of God. Yeah. We have to stop being so independent. Yeah. We are we are so consumed with ourselves and our own stuff. Did Jesus do that? Clearly not. He's the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. We have to fix our eyes on him because if not, this is what's going to happen. In Romans 1, it says that God will give you over to your sinful desires. Yeah. He did it before. He's done it to people for years and years and years and years. 
And people, he says, people, they destroyed themselves. Mm. He gave them over to, to only what they already wanted. God's like, I'm not intervening anymore. How many people have we seen that happen to? A lot. Now, amen, God is sovereign, but did you try to help? And Ezekiel says that we are the watchmen. Who you, have you been watching Netflix or you watching your brothers and sisters? Oh, good question, bro. We have to be part of this team because why we have fans in the stands. And in those moments when we are looking at the players, right? Because we all do it. We all can get caught up on people. Look up at the, look up at the stands and you'll see nothing but Jesus's. Because if you look a little bit closer, because that's who's in the crowd, yeah. that's who's in the stand. Yeah. If you can't see him in the quarterback, you get distracted, look up. Yeah. Mm. Just, like, just like those players when they come out the stadium, they look up. And they see the fans. Yeah. That's what Jesus did. He, was not, he wasn't focused on these sinful men that were persecuting him. He looked up. Amen. And he was able to refocus on why he was there. The game that he had to play, that he had to win. He was a, he had a Super Bowl of his own yeah. called Salvation. Mm -hmm. And he was dead set on making sure it happened and him playing his role. Are you trying to play yours? This yeah. Morning? Good question. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 4, 17. Are we still alive out there? Yes. yes. Come on, bro. Awesome. <laughs> you see, I want us to give us a give us a mindset of this. I believe that if we take this on, that the breath of life, although we are the underdog, can be the top dog. Yeah, come on. <laughs> How many times have I'm? Y'all remember the LA Clippers when they no, for 25 years, nobody was shipping over the LA Clippers. Yeah. That stadium was. <laughs> Empty, gone, dry. No, no one was ever. even thinking about it. <laughs> and then there was a shift, right? Yeah. And then the Clippers were beating the Lakers yeah. out of nowhere. And I was like, when, when did this happen? Like, mm. we, didn't, we forgot the Clippers existed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right, that ha that, why? Because they, they, they got a team where people were convinced about being athletes, about playing their role on the team. And then they became an unstoppable force. And all of a sudden, it was like, man, the, Clipp the Clippers are a team to be, to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. Do the demons in hell think that about you? Mm. Are they like, man, Janae is a disciple to be reckoned with? Mm. They sure do. I made that, <laughs> I made that vow at, at the altar that I would become a man that led his wife and his family that each demon in hell knows that the Petersons are a force to be reckoned That's with. That's right. Is that condition in your heart? Yeah. Like, I want Satan to know my name. Hey. And I want him to know, you coming at me, you going to get it. Baby, you been coming for us. That fires me up. That just literally fired me up, like, right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you done, you done took some stuff from me, but I'm going to take it back. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because guess what? My family's on his team. Right. They're not on my team. Come on. They're all captive right now. Yeah. Come on, honey. I have a motivation. And I got a baby girl waiting for me to get home. Yeah. I stayed as a baby girl because I was convinced that Jasmine was having a girl. Yeah. So every time I every time I journal, I tell God, give my baby girl a kiss for me. Mm. I have motivation. What are you motivated by? Is this your mindset? <laughs> 1 Corinthians 4, starting in verse 17. My honey. It says, For this reason I have sent you Timothy, my son, whom I love. Oh, sorry, 2 Corinthians. No, 1 Corinthians 4, sorry. <laughs> Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ, which agrees with what I teach in every church. Some of you have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you. Mm. But I will come to you very soon, and if Lord willing, and then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. Mm. For the kingdom of God is not of talk, but of power. Mm. What do you prefer? Mm. Oh. There's, a lot, there's a lot of conversations I've just been hearing. <laughs> just about 
people, worried about people, title, etc., etc. Like this, we cannot get caught up on on titles and churches and this leader said this, this Bible talk leader did this, like this shepherd said this. Stop. Yes, Timothy, Paul, Timothy was Paul's son in the faith, right? He called him, he, we have to create other Timothys. Uh, Talisha, Talisha is Jasmine's Timothea, Woo! right? <laughs> Someone that she's pouring into and imitating of it. That's where the power is. You think Paul was was concerned with running his mouth about what Peter was doing, what James, was, what these other apostles were doing? No, he was focused on creating more Timothy and and what and sending them along to do the work of God. That's what we have on teams. You have multiple wide receivers, multiple D tackles because what one's one's always going to be the leader of the group, but everyone has someone else that they're, they're helping bring along. On a team, there's not one person in every single role. There's multiple people that play multiple that that play that role, yeah. and they what? And it's their job. If I'm the wide receiver number one, I got to get wide receiver two and three ready in case I get injured, mm -hmm. in case I if something else happens and they can step in my role. Mm -hmm. But are you are you trying to be that wide receiver number two for your Bible talk leader? Are you trying to be the the D tackle number two for that your house church leader? Are you trying to? Be available to become somebody's sympathy. Are you trying to become part of the team? Are you trying to be that athlete? Or are you just talking about how that you get left out of this or they didn't invite you to the birthday party, the baby shower, whatever it is? We talk a lot. <laughs> we gotta start doing a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk. Let's let's talk about godly things. Let's be about godly things. Amen. Boy, sorry, my I keep shutting down. Come on. Point number two: throw and don't tow your sin. Mm. Let's go back to Hebrews twelve. Come on, Hebrews twelve. Come on, my girl. Thanks, Zachary. <laughs> Starting back in verse two, Hebrews twelve. I see we're, we're, we're going down to verse 3, my bad. The Bible reads, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. See, the, the battle that we have and against our own sinful natures, it can get super tiring. Because sometimes it's not even your life struggle, it's just your struggle against yourself. I just feel like I can't overcome my own self in this area. I don't know how to be patient. Man. I don't know how to I don't know how to forgive this person. I don't know how to not give up <coughs> fear in my finances. I don't know how to be diligent, disciplined. I don't know how to wake up early. It's hard. Ooh. It's early. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you can just grow weary in your own lack of uh, lack of things in your life. Jesus, and the Bible, the scripture calls us to consider him who endures such opposition from sinners. Sometimes in the midst of our own weaknesses, we get super tired with other people's weaknesses too. There's been so many times where I've projected my own frustration with myself under other people. Like, y'all have the same weakness and you mad at them because you ain't getting neither are they. <laughs> like, you super impatient. And I'm impatient with you in my impatience. <laughs> Yeah. That's how it is. Like you, you see yourself in somebody else, and it frustrates you. Yeah. But is is that how Jesus deals with you? And a co when a coach has a, as a player that's not getting it, when he pulls them to the side, <coughs> and they have a talk I, every single time, if, and he he inspires them. Because a lot of times they're just they're you're down on yourself, coach. I'm not getting it. I was super bad at dribbling when I was, when I was playing basketball. It was so discouraging. Because I had an older brother who could do all the behind the back, through the leg stuff, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> super basic. And I just, I would get, I would cry. Hmm. I was like 11. Hmm. I was like, Curtis can do all these, I just can't do it. And my coach pulled me aside, he's like, you just gotta practice. Yo, Curtis is Curtis, you are you. You gotta just focus in on what you can do and take it day by day, step by step. And so I just work on my drills, work on my drills, work on my drills. He said, Chuck, don't try to do the fancy stuff. 
Don't try to do the behind the back stuff. Just work on the technique of it. Right? In athletics, there's a technique to everything. Same thing in our walks with God. There's a tech, there's a, there's spiritual techniques that we have to implement. Do you pray when you have crazy thoughts? Mm. When you're struggling with someone, do you call someone to get open? First John 1, if we walk in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. Mm -hmm. Do you get open? Like there's there's these techniques that we implement to what? To gain the spiritual strength to be able to continue on, to be better players. And then I became a better basketball player because I was able to get that technique down. But there are spiritual techniques. Are you are you kind of just frustrated with spiritual techniques that you just throw them away because they frustrate you? Because you're not getting it because you keep on forgetting to get open or when, you, when things happen, you don't want to pray. You're just so frustrated and emotional. I'm just not going to pray. Then you're never going to grow. Yeah. You're never going to get these techniques down. Yeah. You'll never have that mindset until you switch it like, no, I'm feeling a lot. I'm frustrated. I'm going to go pray. Even if it's for 10 minutes, right? And then it becomes 20 and then 30. And then you and then you start to build up these spiritual habits. And now you're able to have these situations. Where you're not reacting to them anymore. And then you start to have that growth and you're, and you're inspired in your walk with God, you see how he's moving in your life because you're implementing these small techniques, right? Mm -hmm. And they just build on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And then you become an example where if wide receiver number one falls out, you can step in their place easily. Because you've been getting open with them. You've been asking questions. You've been seeking advice. Seeking <laughs> advice. <laughs> We've been seeking advice, right? Right. <laughs> I don't think so. There's, there's a lot of things that have happened recently. Not even, I'm talking about across the board. I've been asking a lot of brothers, did you, did you get advice about that? Mm. Sister, did you get advice about that? Yeah. No, I didn't. And I'm like, man, there's, there's a brother that literally, he's pursuing a sister and put all these like flower petals in her car, yeah. left, left her a, like, her, a, a card. I said, bro, did you get advice about that? <laughs> he said, no, I didn't. I said, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the crazy thing was he like wrote her, he like wrote her name on a card, and then, and uh, I guess invited her on a, on a date, and he wrote and wrote the card too. I said, bro, I have a photographic memory. The handwriting is the same. Yeah. Did you get advice? You think these things happen now? People's hearts become unguarded. It's something small. But it's like these things roll into each other. Like we have we have to be people that, that get advice. This is a spiritual technique. When me and Jasmine first started dating, I didn't got no advice. I didn't understand it. Why? Because I was like, I'm grown. What you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> advice on what? On how on, on how long to talk? <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> No, on if I can, on, on how many times that we can talk a week, chill out. Yeah. I'm grown. And that's, and especially in, in this, this, that's what we just think, like, I'm, I'm grown. Yeah. I'm, I am an adult. The state of California says by 18, I am an adult. I can buy cigarettes and I can have a phone conversation. <laughs> that, that's what we start feeling like. Talk about it, bro. Who, Come on, yeah. Who's bill, whose phone bill you paying? Yeah. I got unlimited minutes. And I have unlimited talk. <laughs> but the Bible says what? <coughs> to seek advice. Many advisors, your plans will prosper. It's a biblical technique. And the moment I started getting way more advice. I saw prosperous plans. I didn't, I didn't, Proverbs 3, 5, I didn't lean so much on my own understanding. Mm -hmm. I know I'm talking about a lot today, but I'm, it, it all encompasses being a disciple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being a spiritual athlete. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans 8, starting in verse 13. It's and that's bad. why I'm excited about going to just continuing going to the gym because there's so many different parts of your body, right? Yeah. That you're gonna that I'm gonna be working on. And that's why there's just so many different parts of our walk with God. It's like, dang, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I'm like, well maybe you should start working now. You you'll start to you'll start to gain more of an understanding of 
as, as there are so many different parts of your body, there are so many different parts of your walk that mm-hmm. need maintenance, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That's why it, you can't, you can, I can't work my whole body out in one workout. I won't be able to walk the next mm-hmm. day yeah. Yeah. or breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but if I work on my legs today and then tomorrow's my arms and then the next day's my back and then I, 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 I gain strength with these and I start to maintain them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So on Monday, yeah. I'm going to study up patience. Yeah. Tuesday's going to be purity. Wednesday's going to be Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thursday's going to be gratefulness. Come this on. is the things that we got to start thinking of. Yeah. That's awesome, bro. Okay. Romans 8, starting in verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Mm. Mm. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Praise God. See, flesh in the Greek is sarx. It, said, it literally means the human condition that lives in opposition to God. Mm. Wow. Everyone has a condition, the human condition, that lives in opposition to God. No one can get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And when you're working out, right, you start to feel the burn. Yes. And and what? In your spiritual walk, the moment you feel the burn, do you give in? Yeah. Do you quit? Because I know last night I was I was I was squatting and I started to feel the burn, but I was like, baby, this is what this is what the money starts. No money. you don't make nothing until the burn. It don't right. really matter. I start. You start to count when the burn kicks in. Yeah. And that's when you start to push your body. You start to gain strength. Yeah. So when you're walking with God, the moment do you you feel the burn? Do you do you do you stop? Do you give in? The moment you're tempted, you just give in. Mm-hmm. The moment you have a crazy thought, you just you just let that thing run. Mm-hmm. And 20 minutes later, you didn't have a full-fledged Paramount <laughs> Picture movie of a crazy thought. Like, oh, <laughs> man. Man. The One truth. Time, I just sat in there for like 30 minutes like, man. <laughs> this, this right here is a good thought. <laughs> and you wonder why you're struggling the next day. Because man. you didn't let that thing sit. You didn't fight it off. You didn't allow the burn to train you to be stronger. Man, bro. It says, but if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. It takes it takes spirit to overcome that. I every time I'm working out, Jasmine, I went we were at the gym on Monday and I did legs and then I went on the stairmaster. And I'm telling you, I wanted to die. His face. I did not. I had. I had not done stairmaster after legs like ever. And literally, I feel my my legs are quivering. But I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go administrate, and then I'll stop and administrate. I then I stop administrate. I told myself just ten minutes after an hour leg workout. I said just ten minutes. I just gotta push myself, and I had to stop multiple times. But I had to keep going. And after about twenty seconds, it was burning. I said, but I gotta make it to a minute. And I'm on that thing. <laughs> His face. <laughs> but I had an internal decision mm-hmm. that I was gonna keep going. Mm. Yeah. Is that your mind this morning? That man, when it starts to burn, I'm, I gotta keep going. Come on, honey. Or are you burning? You're like, listen. Was, I'm not Jesus. Uh, right. That's a question. That's that's a statement. I said that multiple times. Yeah. Well, Jesus is perfect. I'm not Jesus. <laughs> Clearly. We love we love to give ourselves that scapegoat. Yeah. Because the Bible, well, clear, I'm not perfect, so you know, the Bible says I am what I am. Mm, that yeah. also caused you to deny yourself too. Right. right. Or did you forget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, like to, we like to pick them scriptures that like give some scapegoats. It says that God is patient. His, his, also, his wrath is coming. Jesus comes back the second time. It's not. He's coming to snatch wigs, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really is. He's gonna leave the world bald. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, oh my god. <laughs> Again, yes. like a we can't, we can't be trying to give ourselves scapegoats. Yeah. What if someone? What if the Super Bowl got really hard and the quarterback came up like, Coach, I'm just really tired. Oh, okay, we got a game to play. Mm. That's why it tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, so we, that we do not grow weary. Because God knows it's hard. Jesus knows it's hard. 
Mm-hmm. But he's also like, I did it, so you can do it. Right. But you're not going to be able to do it without fixing your eyes on me. Mm-hmm. I was tempted in every way. I know what it's like to be to want to give into the flesh. But how did Jesus come over every time Satan tempted him in the desert? What did he do? Refer to scripture. He gave him a scripture. So what is this spiritual technique that we learn from Jesus? Using scripture. Stop trying to have conversations with your sin. Right. He didn't talk to Satan like, well, let me tell you something here, Satan. I think that if you just recognize that I'm Jesus. No, he said the the son of man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You have to come with spiritual technique. The word on, is your defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, you just listen for a second. I just talk, 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 talk your sin. <laughs> the only thing that sin needs to hear is the word of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on. Four, uh, Philippians 4.8. I know, because I know, if I got a crazy mind, I know y'all got a crazy mind. <laughs> I'm frustrated. I want to sit and steep in everything that's wrong about whoever's making me frustrated. I run, I, baby, I run that list. <laughs> <laughs> but Philippians 4 says, what, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is praiseworthy, mm-hmm. think of such things. And that's something I have to have in my heart recently, because I have a mouth. I've been really focused on uh, Ephesians 4. 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Yeah. I've had to take down like two Facebook statuses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. So I said something. I was like, damn, it's not. A, the Holy Spirit was like, that's not wholesome. <laughs> Dang, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, literally, I literally had a conversation with myself. I said, I don't want to take it down. It's funny. <laughs> People need to hear it. I was talking about, you know, everyone's getting ready for going to, to, go, to go to Mexico City. I can't wait to go to Mexico. And I was like, disciples be going to international conferences, don't got a budget. Don't got a plan for their missions and late on rent. How? <laughs> <laughs> that was not wholesome. So I just took it down. I said, but you still need a budget. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I, I got to take that down. <coughs> Come on. I said, I could probably tell that to someone on a one on one level. I ain't got a machine oh gun the whole church. <laughs> like, so I took it down. <laughs> So now, and I, and I, t- I was, uh, I, I made a couple actually, and I took a screenshot and sent it to someone. Was like, hey, is this unwholesome? <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm getting advice because I'm like, this right. is funny to me, but I don't know if it's gonna not be encouraging. Right. So after that one, now I what? I implemented another spiritual technique that I had gr- that I've developed. I'm like, okay, let me know if this is too much. Yeah. I'm seeking advice so that I'm not unwholesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this is, these are just simple, small things, but someone could have totally been offended by that. Yeah. They yeah. got bitter. Yeah. And now I've created a yeah. whole nother uh, demon in their walk that they got to overcome because I had a straightaway Facebook status. Mm. So, they, they, but my flesh wanted to give, like, I really thought it was funny. Like, I, laughed, I read it a couple times and was laughing. I did too. <laughs> but it, was, but it wasn't was supposed to. Right? No, so th- that was that's my, that's my own example of me having to just bite my flesh, especially when it comes to my mouth. I, I don't I don't want to. Uh, everyone has their own things, but me, I I want to. Sometimes I just want to say whatever I want to say when I want to say it, how I want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> like recently, Jasmine was like uh, a year ago. She was like, "It's just how you say things." But now recently it's been, but now it's what you say. I'm like, I just can't win. <laughs> <laughs> but it's making me grow. It's frustrating because I'm like, first it was how, now it's what. And I'm like, ooh. Because I don't want to have, I wouldn't want to have to filter through what you want me to, I want to say how, what I want to say. <laughs> right. And, and you can and you can go pray about it to God. You can go be spiritual. <laughs> but that, that's my flag. So I have to, now I have to start praying God. Give me words what to say. Yes. Come on. And oh, it's, it's not easy. Because growing up, my mom didn't care about how I felt about what she said. No. She just yeah. said it and it was in, say something. <laughs> That's how I want to do it. I'm like, listen, this is what it is. You tripping. <laughs> we all have those moments where we have to just like, we have to consider, mm-hmm. man, I can't give into this. Yeah. I can't give into this impatience. I have to, because it says, if you live, According to the flesh, you will die. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get cut. <coughs> because we all think that compromise in one area won't lead to compromise in another. Yeah. yeah. 
you start compromising in conversations with people, then before it, then it's your purity, then it's your contribution. And before you know it, now you've built an unspiritual technique of compromising your walk with God. Yeah. And it bleeds over into everything. Exactly. James said when sin is fully grown, it gives, it gives birth, birth to, to death. death. Yeah. But how do you grow something? You gotta feed it. Yeah. Right? Wow. You feed that little baby sin every single day before you know that it's as big as Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Goliath sized sin because you've been feeding it. Mm. Wow. Come on. Let's go let's go to Philippians three, starting in verse ten. We're gonna close it out here soon. Come on, honey, this is great. <laughs> Philippians 3 and verse 10. See, one of the biggest parts of training, see, I went from basketball to football, and then I went into dance, which is, like, super random. And not just dance, but I had a very <coughs> focus on ballet. And I had Russian ballet teachers. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Stephanie, they were, they were crazy. I remember I, I I was at the ballet bar, and I, I was on one leg, and I was holding my leg here. My teacher comes, grabs my leg, and then lifts it up here. And she said, pull, and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how, this is a big old leg. <laughs> I was over there like. <laughs> but it was part of the training, because then, I was able to, I went to college and I was a dance major and I was in that class and holding that leg was nothing. Bow! But I had to go through the suffering. Let's, let's read the scripture. I'm going to tie it all in. Philippians 3 and verse 10. It says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow attaining resurrection from the dead. You see, as an athlete, as a dancer, you have to, you physically, like, die. <laughs> but as you continue to go through these, these deaths physically, you, you come out stronger, able to do more, able to execute more of the techniques. Similarly, as an athlete, you, you kill yourself physically, but then you get stronger and stronger and stronger. It's like having a new body, right? You, you push yourself and then you're able to do more, extend yeah. further. In our walks with God, we have to do the same thing. Are we getting stronger and stronger? Are we okay with suffering and letting whatever situation it is kill our pride yeah. so that we can be made? That's what Paul's talking about. He says, I want to participate in Christ's suffering, becoming like him, and <coughs> so that I can be resurrected anew. Be a new Paul. Yeah. Are you a new Stephanie? Are you a new Deshae? Are you a new Charlotte? Or are you hopping off your cross mm. because it's just too hard? Mm. Are you the same person you were six months ago, a year, two years ago? Because if you are, I put before you, you are. You have not died. Yeah. There are so many things that I ha I've changed about myself, and it was not for people. If you guys, for, if you guys first made me become a disciple, man, <laughs> let me tell you something. I, I had a lot of rough edges. Like I told you guys, if y'all, if anyone came at me in a way that I did not like, they were getting a year full, mm -hmm. male or female, didn't matter. I said, we we serve everybody here. Okay. And one of you could get it. <laughs> I was, I had, a, I had no temper, and on top of that, because like coming out of my the lifestyle I was in, I had, I had was super flamboyant. I actually had to make a mental choice. Be, being a singer, being the lifestyle, I, I, had a, I used to talk in my high register all the time. And I had to make a mental decision to start talking in a low, my lower register so that it would not come off that way. Mm. You would think it's not a, what, that's, that's like not a big deal. But in 1 Corinthians 9, it says I, that I had to become all things to all people. So that if I, pre if I present myself in a certain way that makes anybody turned off to myself and through myself Christ, right. then I'm not doing what I need to do. Yeah. Come on, so I have, Come to, on, I have to change me. Come on. Yeah. But to do that, I had to die. Yeah. Multiple times. A caterpillar doesn't just become a butterfly. It becomes a cocoon. <coughs> and it sheds that and it becomes that. Yeah. Are you still a caterpillar today? Yeah. Are you still 
fighting your cross. Because without that, you will never become the person that God wants you to be. The reason God has so much faith in us is because he doesn't see us where we're at. He sees us through the scope and perspective of Christ and who he's made us to be. <laughs> but that you can, he can only see you through Christ if you die as Christ did. Yeah. If you live through your flesh, you will die. We must participate in Christ's sufferings and become like him in death so we can be made new over and over and over again. Yeah. You see, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, they didn't become these amazing athletes because they were okay with just where they were at. They constantly pushed themselves and died and became new versions of themselves over and over and over again. And now they are legends yeah. in their respective fields. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a legend of a disciple? Do you want to be the people that we hear about like Abraham and Sarah? Let's turn to Hebrews 11. Let's read about these, these men and women who are legendary in the Bible. They will always be remembered because they chose to be who God has called them to be and to be the spiritual athletes that God has called them to be as well. Does anyone know the other nickname for Hebrews 11? Hall of Faith. The, the heroes are the Hall of Faith. These people have not only made it into the Bible, which is amazing, but they've been entered into this book, this chapter, that's known as the Heroes of Faith. So, like, you made it into the Bible, boom. But then you're, like, seen as a hero <laughs> of the faith. Hebrews 11, let's start in verse 7. Start in verse uh, 5, excuse me. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For because he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, faith is, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he, was, he commended the world, condemned the world, excuse me, and became heir to the righteousness that is keeping in, in with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. Mm. He was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah who was past childbearing years, age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who made the promise. See, these people, they had faith and were obedient in that. I can imagine what it was like for, for God to tell Noah to build the ark and wait a hundred years. I'm sure every day he walked outside and looked up at the sky, like just like this, no cloud in the sky. Okay, I'm just going to build this ark. Um, with no rain clouds, then I'm old, but we're going to do it. For a hundred years, a hundred, some, listen, 2017 was a long year, y'all. Long. A hundred of those? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, it says he, he did it out of reverent fear. <coughs> and obedience <coughs> to God. Abraham went to a, went to a foreign country, like a stranger, and lived in tents, and yet was faithful and obeyed. When the coach gives you your play, do you obey? Mm -hmm. Or do you make, if he says, I want you to run up to the 20 yard line and slant right, do you slant left? Because by the time you hit the, the 18 yard line, you think your plan is better. Like, you know what, I think this, this well, this, this big old guy is coming, so I'm going to go left to protect myself. And not entrusting yourself to the sovereignty of God and slanting right. Knowing that what? Like Sarah considered him who is faithful. If coach tells you to slant right at the 20-yard line, know that coach knows what he's doing. He's been coached since before there was time. 
He said, let there be light. Guess what? The sun still rises. Mm. You woke up this morning. Mm -hmm. With his mere words, he created the universe. And you don't think that he can take care of you. These spiritual techniques, you guys. Obedience. Advice. Prayer. Being focused in on being a disciple. Ooh. Let's finish out here. Back to Philippians 3 and verse 14. Come on, honey. See, I believe that the Brother of Life House Church Woo! can be an inspiration for the entire kingdom of God. Mm, but, but we have to be a team first. Yeah. We have to be obedient to God. We got to seek advice. We got to be prayerful. We have to not live in the flesh. Mm -hmm. We have to get. We have to tell people that they need to join this team, mm -hmm. so they're not on the other one being used. Philippians 3.14 says, I press onward toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. See, like we read last week, Paul was the hardest working apostle, but he wasn't focused on that. For sure, I know Paul was focused on getting to heaven because he even said, if I die, it's gain. If I stay, it's gain. He said, if I die, I get to be with Jesus. If I stay, I'm making more disciples. Mm. Is that your mindset? Like, God, I'm here, so let, let me make some more disciples. Let me let me get some more people on this team. Where yeah. am I? Where am I focused on my teammates? Am I focused at because we ran out of Gatorade and water? <laughs> what are you focused on? Are you a part of God's team? Come on, my God. Into God's glory. Amen. Amen.